Greetings, everybody. In today's very special episode, I present to you an experiment that I did a while back where for one whole week, I went fruitarian. I followed a raw fruit diet. For seven days, I had no coffee, no vegetables, no grains, no salt, no coffee, no sugar, nothing heated up, no spices, no coffee, and worst of all, no coffee. The reason why I did this is that it seemed like a lot of the resources about fruitarianism were being done with an agenda. It was fruitarians trying to promote fruitarianism. I am not fruitarian. I don't really have a strong opinion for or against it. So at the time, I felt like I was a good candidate to do this. I would be able to do it fairly unbiased. Now, for context, I am not a fruitarian, I am not a vegan, I am not a raw foodist. I am, however, a vegetarian. I was raised vegetarian. But believe it or not, I do not walk around every day and try to convert every single person I find on the street into a vegetarian. That is not what I do. That is not what this channel is for. I don't really care what you do. And in the same direction, I am not trying to promote fruitarianism. In fact, uh, if you're watching this because you want to be a fruitarian, uh, I hope it's useful to you, but I would highly suggest seeing a doctor. Fruitarianism can be dangerous for some people or if it's not followed properly. And finally, I did post this on my channel back when I filmed it, but uh, I did it very run and gun style. I would wake up in the morning, put a camera in my face, and then film through the day and then put it up online. In this video, I edit it together so it's a lot more watchable. I wasn't able to get rid of the air conditioner noise. I'm sorry. I wasn't able to get rid of the fact that I used to talk like I'm from the valley. If I eat like one more sweet thing, I'm going to like lose my mind. Uh, I've just been eating like so much sugar. Uh, you know, I like it. Like everything's been like pretty tasty. But uh, I did get rid of a lot of fluff and I made it a lot better. So uh, I think it looks pretty good now. I think you'll think so too. So um, let's do it. Day one. So this is uh, off to a weird start. I'm like hungry right now because I spent last night at uh, a lady friend's house. So woke up and she's like, oh, let's get coffee and bagels. And I'm like, can't. And she's like, oh, right, right. So already this is affecting my social life somewhat. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll get into that, I'm sure, as it, as it goes on. But right now I want to deal with some food. So I like took an Uber back home, ran into a, um, a fruit market. It's very, very cheap fruit. So I'm lucky enough where I live right next to a uh, two fruit markets, like one block away from me, that they're very cheap. Even with that, this cost just under $17. What I have here is uh, three very big peaches. I also got a pineapple. Uh, I got melon. I've got two avocados, which these are, they only had two that were soft in the entire bin. And I think this is going to be like my nightmare of the week is just trying to get enough avocado inside my stomach instead of just rocks. Here is a giant papaya and I got four little cucumbers for a dollar. These are like Persian cucumbers. I got a Florida avocado, and I got a thing of bananas. This was uh, 49 cents a pound. So altogether, pretty cheap, but still $17. What I'm doing right now, I'm just going to make like a giant uh, fruit bowl, and basically just like, you make more fruit than you think you need. This avocado came out pretty good. It's a nice Florida avocado. Okay, so I'm sure this is very exciting watching me cut fruit, but uh, it's not. So I'll uh, flash forward a little bit when this bowl is done. Isn't that lovely? The cat is meowing. She is so excited about this bowl. It actually looks really good. Yes! You are a movie star. Yep. Okay. She just ate too, so. Uh, yeah, inside this bowl I have a quarter of a papaya, I've got one small cucumber, I've got uh, two bananas, one peach, half of a Florida avocado. I also took some of this uh, grated coconut, which I bought at an Indian food store, so this is meant for cooking, it's not 
like meant for sweets. So all that's in this is dried, decimated coconut. And I also used uh, some cacao beans, some raw cacao beans. That's good. I left the papaya seeds in this. You know, papaya seeds are edible. And it's giving it like a little bit of like a black pepper kind of taste, which is good. Usually in the morning I eat toast with butter and jam. That's it. You know, I usually have that and a cup of coffee. That is like my typical breakfast. So I kind of like crave fat in the morning. So having an avocado is pretty good. Uh, the peach is terrible. It's giving it a texture. Another thing that I should point out is that I'm gonna be taking vitamin supplements while I'm doing this week because, um, well, I think like this is something that a lot of fruitarians would probably have a problem with. But when I was looking online and seeing like actually like medical records, like what doctors recommend if you're gonna do a diet that's like this or similar to this, they recommend taking supplements. Uh, I think especially since I'm new to this, I want to be doing this safely. And these are um, supplements that I take every day already. One of the things I saw online is they recommend not drinking anything if you're on a fruitarian diet because fruit is supposed to have enough liquid in it. Although I'm thirsty right now, I'm going to eat this whole thing and see if I'm thirsty after eating it. No more fruit. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't eat any more of this. I still have like a little bit. Like maybe one fifth of what was in this thing, like one fourth, one fifth of the fruit I started with. Um, my lord. Okay, so what am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing? There are different definitions on what a fruitarian is. You can be doing it purely for health, you can be doing it purely for the ethical reasons, you can do it for the spiritual reasons. Me, uh, I'm doing this as a YouTube experiment, okay? Uh, but I'm mostly going to be abiding by the health version of it. There are fruitarians who will, you know, pick the fruit. There are fruitarians that will cook fruit. And there are fruitarians that will do a raw diet. Some fruitarians eat seeds and some do not. How I'm going to do this is I am going to eat seeds if they are in something. You know, if I'm eating a strawberry, I am not going to be spitting out the strawberry seeds, okay? Raw almonds or raw uh, sesame seeds and cashews and stuff like that, I think that is okay, but I'm going to try to exercise moderation in that. You know, the biggest thing is that I'm going to go completely raw. I'm not going to have anything cooked. Which also, if you know you're doing that, it goes into other territory. No uh, coffee, no tea, no sugar. Uh, I'm not going to use any salt. Uh, I'm not going to use any spices unless they are uh, naturally dried spices. But I think the majority of spices are cooked. The thing about this week that I am most concerned about is not the limitation of only eating fruit. You know, obviously there are a lot of fruits out there. I know that. <laughs> I, I've made uh, I've made a lifestyle out of that. I know there's a lot of fruit out there. I feel like I could subsist off of fruit uh, pretty easily, but the raw food thing is the thing that troubles me. The raw food thing troubles me because I like food hot. If I were able to cook my fruit, I'd be able to do a lot of things. I can make my own bread out of like plantains and breadfruit or something. Like you can get a lot from fruit that is cooked, but because I'm going raw, uh, that's all gone. So more fruits, but I got more coconut from a Indian market. Uh, I've got some whole cashews, these are raw. Uh, I've got some dates. I bought this, which is a Sikkim cucumber, I believe. Two lemons, a bag of peppers, and a coconut. So all of this here is $25. Hmm. Started to look a little expensive, but you know, some of these things are things that are going to be lasting me the whole week, I think. It's uh, getting, getting kind of late. It's after five, and I'm still actually quite full. 
but it's like a weird kind of full. It's like my... I still like crave things. Like I, I would love to still have like a cup of coffee and some toast. I feel like I did not start the day uh, properly. I think I just have gotten used to that ceremony of doing that so often that um, my body's like, what's, what's going on? Feel maybe like a little bit sluggish, and I'm attributing that to the lack of caffeine. Um, for the past few days, I have not had any coffee uh, leading up to the first day. I just wanted to like wean myself off it like a little bit. So in the past few days, I've just had tea, but still my body wants that caffeine. So I'm going to make a salad, but first I need to make a dressing. So here's my tahini. That's all it says there is uh, sesame seeds, so I think that's okay. And also the juice of two lemons. So yeah, one of these peppers, it's a long hot pepper. This is going to get cut up and placed into the blender. Seeds and all. Like so. Uh, I think I'm gonna put some water in now because this is gonna get very thick. Little taste. Yeah, it's pretty good. Fatty tasting. Uh, spicy. That pepper's very hot. So here's what's going in my salad. Got some tomatoes. Some of these sweet peppers. And we got these Persian cucumbers. And I'm going to put some of my dressing in here. I also topped it with some uh, raisins there. See, it looks pretty good. I would love if I could put some salt in this and some more spices because it's a little bit um, bland. But the fattiness of that tahini is really good. The raisins are good. All the, veg all the vegetables in here are good, or the fruit rather. The culinary vegetables are good. I'm not like super hungry, but like I said earlier, my stomach's just kind of like something's missing. You know, <laughs> like I'm used to filling it with bread, and uh, I did not fill it with bread today. So I feel kind of like the urge to eat more, but not the things that I have. Like, this is usually around the time like I would make like a cup of tea and just kind of like have like a like a crutch, like something to kind of like sip at. And uh, I don't have that. I can drink water, I guess, but I don't want to drink water. And what I am going to do is I'm going to eat the rest of my fruit salad. Yeah, I'm going to eat this and do a little bit more work and go to bed. Nothing, um, not, not feeling terrible, not feeling great. Just kind of like craving a few things, but otherwise this is going pretty well so far. All right, so I will see you guys tomorrow. Never mind. <laughs> it's um, 10.30 now, and my body's just like, hey, idiot, put snacks in me. I just want like something like carby right now, something salty, and I can't. I <laughs> can't have either of those things. Like I'd be happy just like eating some like salted nuts maybe. So what I did is I put a little salad together of tomatoes and um, pepper, and I threw some of those cashews on top. Yeah, that's pretty good. So, try that again. I'll see you tomorrow. I feel okay. I feel pretty good. I don't feel hungry, which is uh, amazing. Last night, I think I had like a, a handful of cashews at some point that I didn't document. Otherwise, it's all that you saw. 
Oh, and some dates. I, that's the one thing that I've never really eaten a whole lot of before is dates. And uh, I think after yesterday, I'm like, wow, what am I missing out on? I need to do a date episode. I miss the coffee. You know, I feel like coffee would give me a reason to get out of bed in the morning. So I'm like, I'm an entertainer. I can start work whenever I want. You know, I, I don't have a gig today or anything. I don't need to do anything. I could just stay home. I could just like stay in bed all day. Wouldn't be a good idea. I gotta do stuff to make a living. Coffee is like oddly like a little motivator for me. So I like woke up and I like was like, okay, I'm awake now. Cat looked at me. She's like, come get me some food. And I went back to sleep. Like, I normally I think I would have woken up and gotten a cup of coffee and like started my day, but because uh, I couldn't have my coffee, I'm like, I guess I'm just gonna, I just like laid back down, went to sleep for another like hour or two. I don't have like that little like kick kind of like motivating me. So I figured today for breakfast, instead of making a big bowl, like a fruit salad, I'm just gonna kinda like eat things like piece by piece. I kinda want a peach. They're not especially good peaches, but you know, I kinda want that flavor right now. But I kinda want a coconut. So we're gonna start with that and um, see how we go. This coconut water does not taste very good, so I think my coconut might actually be bad. My cat has a problem with this coconut. Is it bad? Can you tell? Oh. Yeah, I think she doesn't like this one. doesn't look like it's bad, so, hmm, it's fine. While I'm eating this uh, coconut, or attempting to, it's hard to get a little meat pieces out, tell you my story. First time I ever tried to go fruitarian was actually uh, in the Philippines. Uh, you may have watched my uh, marang video, big crazy artocarpus fruit. That there was my attempt to, to go fruitarian. Yeah, the Philippines was a very, very tricky place for me to be vegetarian in. So every day I would eat an omelet. So I'm like, well, why don't I just like eat fruit for breakfast? So like I was hungry, I went into a market, I bought that morong, I ate that entire morong, and those things are big. And then I went back to my hostel that I was staying at, and I ordered an omelet because although I was full after eating that morong, it was like being full of water. Yesterday, uh, I was feeling something similar to that, but not quite as bad. And I think that's because I'm being a little bit more cautious about the types of fruit that I'm eating. You know, if I were to eat just a morong, like that is a lot of sugar, that's a lot of water, that's not like a whole lot of fat or protein or anything. But if I'm eating like a coconut, you know, that's a different, a whole different story. When I was out in the city today, I bought some rambutans. Look at that lovely guy. These were uh, 350 for one pound. And I also stopped to get some more tomatoes because I was out. These were 75 cents. I think it's time for lunch now. It's like 5.30. It's pretty late. I haven't eaten since, um, no probably like 11. So I'm just gonna make what I had before. If I eat like one more sweet thing, I'm going to like lose my mind. Uh, I've just been eating like so much sugar. Uh, you know, I like it. Like everything's been like pretty tasty, but right now I need to, I need to take it easy on the sugar. So my like go-to has been just like, oh, grab a piece of fruit, grab a date. And that's like, those dates have 18 grams of sugar in one. So those things are sweeter than candy. So I'm gonna go with those peppers and tomatoes and put some of that dressing on it. I'm just gonna do that. It's like 10.30. So I ate that last meal, like was like four or five hours ago or something. So I've been kind of like picking at things. Like I ate like a couple of rambutans. I ate like a couple of nuts. 
but just kind of like, eh, just like I have like the need to eat, but not like super hungry. I just feel like I should be consuming things. I think it's maybe about time for me to eat something else. So what I'm going to do is I got some papaya left over from yesterday. I'm going to take a squeeze of lemon or lime rather. I'm gonna put some of this uh, avocado. I ate half of it today, I put it in the salad I had earlier. How does it taste? It tastes like papaya, but the uh, lime juice is really good on it because that brings out some of the flavor because papaya is just kind of mild to me. Day two, um, it was fine. You know, yesterday my stomach was kind of like confused. It felt like kind of like bubbly, like there was something uh, that it wanted, that it wasn't getting. Today I feel less of that. I feel more of like a psychological need to eat. Um, which is, it's weird that like I'm having such reactions only after two days of doing this. <laughs> you know, it's not like a whole lot of time, but already I'm kind of like feeling my body like adjusting a little bit. So hopefully by the end of this week, I'm gonna be like eating this fruit like a champ and like not craving uh, buttered toasted coffee, which I still am. Um, that need to eat bread is still in me and uh, I can't have it so that's been bugging me and salt I miss salt what I would like right now is something like salty and bready but uh, instead I'm gonna have some papaya and then I'm going to go to bed well it's morning <laughs> and uh... This, uh, this cat definitely wants her breakfast, but I'm not hungry. Which is very strange. Yeah, you are just too cute, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, because I figured I'd be, like, starving on this diet. I figured just, like, you're only eating fruit, but, like, it <laughs> turns out that, um, it's actually quite filling. Maybe it's all, like, the fiber in it or something. Um... I don't know, but I feel like every time I'm eating, I am like, kind of like forcing myself to eat. Like I don't especially want to eat it. Like, I don't feel like eating fruit. I don't feel like eating any of this stuff. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like if I had my way, I would again have like a cup of coffee and like something small, make some toast. Uh, but I don't even really feel like a huge craving for that right now. But I guess I'm going to go eat something because I feel like I should, you know, I should be eating. But I'm not, uh, not really having huge cravings or any huge hunger. Hey. Yeah. Phew. I need to get this cat some breakfast before she, like, headbutts me to death and... <laughs> this morning we have frozen fruit because this is something you can eat if you are fruitarian. Uh, at least in the form that I am doing. Uh, this is supposed to keep all the nutrients in there, at least most of them, but, you know, cooking is supposed to um, kill some of that. I think this was like $2 for a big thing of, um, of mangoes, 14 ounces of mango pulp. And it's all, it is pasteurized though. Oh, uh, maybe I'm not gonna use it then. Okay, never mind. Uh, don't, those pulps are good if you're okay with things being pasteurized, but you know, if you know anything about pasteurization, that means that this pulp was heated up before it was frozen. Uh, this is a uh, mora. This is a special kind of blackberry that um, grows in South America. And here are some whole strawberries. They are fancy. And uh, these three... Oh, I've also bought some oranges. I bought four oranges. The oranges, the pulp, the berries, uh, this all together was $15. I could probably get like maybe a couple of uh, smoothies out of this. Oh, by the way, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to make a, a smoothie. Right now, berries are pretty cheap in my neighborhood, so uh, I probably would have been better off just buying these fresh, but I wanted to um, I wanted to give an idea of what the frozen stuff is like. At least this frozen stuff, not that frozen stuff. 
Now, in preparation of going on this week, I bought this blender. Uh, I didn't have one before. Is that too much? It's probably too much. And uh, I have no idea if it's really up to the task of doing this. It got through my dressing the other day pretty okay, but uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be able to do this or not. That's why I bought the oranges, put some liquid into it. So I just uh, ran this under some like hot water for a second to uh, loosen up the peel. So that worked pretty well. And I'm going to put the juice of one orange in here. I'm just going to throw these on top, which is a terrible idea. It's no way. There's no way that's going to get to the bottom. So this should be interesting. Let's see how it goes. It worked, but it smells like burning plastic in here now. So I think the motor of my blender has met its match. Um, so I'm turning it off, and I think we're I think we're good. It doesn't have to be that smooth of a smoothie, right? Now it is like 90 degrees out today, so this is a, a welcome breakfast for me. That's really nice. Um, tastes like strawberry sorbet. The banana is not, it's there, but it's not um, so super strong. So that's good, because I don't, I don't really like banana smoothies. I like bananas like fresh on their own, but I don't like them frozen. But it does give it like a nice like creamy kind of texture. I've made enough to fill this cup probably three times with just that amount. So although I said it's kind of expensive with $15 for all that fruit and um, the oranges, it's maybe like a dollar or two per smoothie, which is, is not bad. If you go to like a, a shop and get it, it's gonna cost you like a hell of a lot more than that. Yeah, what's weird about today is that when I woke up initially, uh, I felt like trash, I felt terrible. I felt like very like overly full and uh, sluggish and kind of like a little wonky. TMI. Uh, <laughs> then I went to like the bathroom and uh, you know got ready and everything and after that I kind of like I felt much better. I feel like there's like when you're eating this much fruit it's really filling you up. There's like a lot of fiber in there, there's a lot of water in there so you feel kind of like like you have a lot in you. So that is something that's kind of I can see why people say not to drink water when you're doing this, because that's adding more liquid on what you're doing. Right now I feel, I feel okay. I'm not hungry, really, but you know, I'll be able to totally eat the, this whole thing. Uh, I'm not really craving anything either. If I had the opportunity of having some coffee and some toast right now, I would definitely take it, but I'm not like, give it to me, give me the bread, like I was yesterday. This mattress is terrible. Yeah, so I just took a, uh, a yoga class. It was a little bit easier than, well, a lot easier than the one I usually do. I usually do like the master crazy yoga thing, but this one was just like an hour of like more basic stuff. And um, it was fine, totally fine. I had no issues, um, wasn't like out of breath or anything. I was worried that maybe like this uh, diet is going to like not give me like the right kind of energy or something, right kind of strength, but I felt normal. Okay, another trip to the store, and what do I have? I managed to find some zucchini squash noodles, so just little strips of zucchini. I got some uh, butternut squash noodles, some bananas. I actually got six bananas, but I ate two of them on the way here. I got two heirloom tomatoes, some sugar snap peas, and two packets of sun-dried tomatoes. $24 for this here. Yep. Anytime I see any sort of reference to a fruitarian sort of recipe or anything like that, always with the zucchini noodles. And the thing with this is that I really don't like zucchini. Not at all. So I'm actually not going to do zucchini noodles today. I'm going to do the butter nut, the butternut squash noodles. We're going to try there. And if I like that, then maybe tomorrow if I'm feeling brave, then I'll get into zucchini territory. 
Yeah. Uh, never thought this day would happen. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm kind of kind of wing it a little bit But basically I'm just gonna make like a raw sauce. I've got these two lovely uh, Tomatoes here and these are heirloom tomatoes, so they should be super tasty. Let me try a little piece of it Oh, yeah, yeah, that's good stuff. I love tomatoes, but you know honestly I'm kind of sick of them but if I want something savory, that seems to be like the best bet. So I'm going to add some other stuff to it. First, an avocado. Plop, plop, plop. And I'm going to put two peppers in. And I'm also going to place some of these uh, sun-dried tomatoes in here. These are going to maybe like overtake the heirloom tomatoes a little bit, which uh, seems like kind of a shame. But they're also very like salty tasting, so I think it needs it. Needs a little bit of sugar, <laughs> so I'm going to take uh, a couple of dates. So I got a bowl of noodles here, and let's put some of this delicious looking brown sludge on top. And not the prettiest looking thing, <laughs> but it's uh, hopefully going to be delicious. You know, the one nice thing about uh, cooking raw is you don't need to wait for it to cook. So that's kind of cool. It doesn't take super long. Like I came home with all these ingredients and that was like a few minutes and I've got food. I suppose it's tricking my mind a little bit into thinking that I have noodles, but do you want some? I don't think you do, it's very spicy. But it feels like I have some other kind of food, and that is uh, good right now, because I'm getting pretty bored of eating the same ingredients done in different ways. I would love this to be like hot. The texture is good. The squash is kind of like a boring sort of thing. It doesn't have like a whole lot of a lot of taste to it when it's raw. But I guess that's better um, than if I were to have something sweet. Just the fact that this is like a fairly boring thing with like a very flavorful sauce on it is good. Day three is down. Um, and by the way, as I'm going through these days, I've been kind of like, I pick at things, okay? So I'm not showing like everything that I'm eating. I am eating more than uh, what you see, but I'm giving you an idea of like what these things are. The first day, I had a hard time. The second day, I had a hard time. Uh, but it felt like, like a biological need for the food. Like the first day was like a biological need, like something's wrong, like eat the bread. The second day seemed more like a psychological thing. And today, I don't really feel either of those. It's more of just like, be kind of nice you know it's like I'm feeling a little bit bored of the fruit which is interesting because it's only the third day I have to say that's pretty good <laughs> I, I was expecting to be just miserable for the entire week but uh, I'm actually okay I feel fine I went to a yoga class and that was fine uh, I went out and I wasn't like you know panicking trying to find food or anything like I felt like a little bit hungry at some point I went to a store and I bought a banana and it went away one thing that happened that was kind of like a little annoying though is that I'm finding that this is uh, definitely something that you have to do at home you can't eat out like a huge number of, of people in New York are following some sort of vegetarian vegan or raw food kind of diet and uh, I went into like one of like the most like natural food, like so healthy sort of places uh, called By Chloe. Uh, they have a chain throughout New York. And I went into one in Williamsburg today and I couldn't eat a single thing on the menu. And that is uh, a little disheartening. You know, I, I like eating out and I can't. So I think maybe if I went to a specifically raw food uh, restaurant, which there are a few in New York, then uh, I'm sure if I asked them, they'd be able to make something for me. 
So it's it's extremely restrictive. You know, this is something that I can see uh, being not difficult to do if you're doing it at home, but like when you go out, maybe uh, not following it. Today was fine, had a pretty good day, and tomorrow, um, feeling good about tomorrow. So I will see you then. It is hump day, yep. I am, uh, after today, it is going to be almost done. The idea of like waking up and having to eat like nothing but fruit again is um, a little bit difficult. I can see this being um, a much more exciting sort of endeavor if I was living in a tropical region where I can like run into the market and find like a bunch of like weird stuff. So this morning I'm going to do a uh, another fruit bowl, but a uh, big reason why I want to do another fruit bowl is that some of this fruit is starting to turn. Like this papaya I cut like three days ago now, so uh, this needs to be eaten, and there's a lot of it, and also some of this other stuff is getting like a little squishy, so it's time to turn it into something. It's a peach, and when I first got it, it was rock hard, now it is pretty soft. Looks like it's gotten better. Give it a little taste. It's okay. Ugh. These avocados are also pretty terrible. Some cacao beans. Okay, crunch them up. Throw them in. Coconut powder, put some of that on there, top it all off with a squeeze of this line. Exciting, exciting, exciting. Still good. I'm kind of missing like other kinds of flavors. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do something kind of crazy. I just cut up a chili and that is going in there. Yeah, I need some more flavor, and if that means putting heat into my fruit salad, then so be it. <coughs> I feel alive! <clears throat> I kind of wish I could put some salt in here. But, um, although the sun-dried tomatoes I have kind of taste salty, no added salt, but they still kind of taste salty. Uh, I don't, I haven't gone that far. I don't want to put tomatoes in this. So, I've been, uh, oh, in the shower, apparently, but uh, I also have been struck by brilliance. So what I have here are my dates, which are super, super sweet, caramel-like dates, which are uh, Kodari dates. Cut it down the center, just in half. I'm going to pick out the date seed and replace it with a cacao bean. So from the outside, it just looks like a plain old date, but that tastes like <clears throat> a chocolate caramel. So that's like a little snack that I've been eating lately, and I feel like I'm just like totally brilliant for doing it. And I'm sure there's tons of people that do it, but um, good idea if you really want a chocolate and you are on a fruitarian diet. I'm going out and uh, don't want to be stuck hungry when I'm out with friends, so I made a bowl of my uh, leftover noodles here. Put some cashews on top. Living dangerously. Wouldn't normally be eating, but uh, kind of like just preparing myself <laughs> for, you know, being out and maybe not able to eat easily. Okay, we're getting serious here. Got my mango, got a bag of mango steams, and yes, I got a durian. It's a tiny one, very tiny, but um, yeah, durians in New York City are extraordinarily expensive. This is uh, this was about $19 for this little guy. 
not a whole lot there, but I know that Fruitarians really love their durians, so I figured I should see what the fuss is about. Uh, you know, I like durians okay, but um, maybe this is going to be like even more delicious now that I've been Fruitarian for a few days. And um, yeah, the rest is also quite expensive. So altogether, this was $39. Yeah. Feeling kind of tired of all the sweet stuff, so I'm going more of a vegetable-ish route. I have my typical salad here with tomatoes and peppers in it, but I also have these um, sugar snap peas, which you can argue this one on me, but it is botanically a fruit. Do dig the green taste kind of reminds me of eating lettuce or spinach or something. And I like the crispiness, like those got a nice snap to them. Mm-hmm. That is satisfying. Made it through another day. The interesting thing today was that I went out. I went out and about with, uh, with friends and didn't have a problem. I went to an art gallery and they had like a table full of like food and they had like a little fruit platter. So like that worked out. It was tempting to like eat a bunch of like crackers and chips and stuff, but um, they had something that I could eat. So I picked at that while I was at the gallery and then uh, went out with friends to a, um, uh, it was like a, like a food court at a mall. Well, I didn't eat anything. I just had some water, but sat with my friends while they ate. It was a little, tempting to you know reach and just grab a fistful of their food but um no major issues it wasn't awkward because it was a food court so some people are just like sitting there with nothing if i were to be like in a restaurant that would have been an issue it's rude to go to a restaurant and not buy anything and uh, it's a little weird to sit at a table when somebody else is eating and you're not so uh, i see that as a challenge but um from like what I did today, it ended up working out. I feel healthy, energetic enough, uh, don't feel like I'm dying, so I think I'm gonna survive this week. I think it's gonna happen. So I will see you tomorrow. Hello everybody. I realize that these like shots shooting up are weird, oh, look how big my hands look, uh, are kind of weird, but it's early, you know, especially the first shot of the day. Yeah, I'm not framing this thing. Like, I just need to get up and get some food and stuff. Today is day five, and I think it's been enough time that we start to really get serious here. I'm going to break into my durian. There are a lot of people out there that go completely crazy about these things and um, I understand why they do but personally I'm I have not fully acquired the taste. So I wonder if now that I've only eaten fruit for four days you know and I'm on day five now that maybe like this is going to be just like delicious candy to me. Oh yeah I can. Look at that! That's adorable! Oh yeah, that is, um... That's really good. It's super oniony. It is definitely like an oniony one. Which normally I would not like. But, I feel because <laughs> I've been uh, only eating fruit for so many days, I think this is like kind of like what my body wants right now. I, I feel like the cells in my body just kind of like smiling, like, oh my God, give me this. If you don't know what durian tastes like, vaguely, it's kind of like a eggy custard with onions. I'm enjoying it a lot right now, but it is very, very rich and very, very strong. So it feels like I'm kind of like eating uh, like butter a little bit, like very, very fattening. So, might only be able to get through this, but we'll see. The answer is all of it. I can eat all of it. Uh, <laughs> I saved one little wedge, and I really want to finish this. I want to eat it, um, but I'm going to wait 
I'm gonna hold it. The thing cost me almost 20 bucks, so I wanna like savor it a little bit. So I'm gonna save this for later today or for tomorrow. But uh, damn, fruitarians. Uh, yeah, I see what you're talking about. Like durian is definitely what you wanna be eating if you are a fruitarian. It makes a lot of sense why so many fruitarians are obsessed with durian and why they're like all in like Bali eating durians like because that is exactly the kind of flavor you want that's exactly the kind of like fat content and everything that you want it's been about mm, three hours four hours since my durian feast and i am starving so uh i made another bowl of noodles but this time, instead of the butternut squash, I did break into the zucchini. Now, if you didn't see that uh, that day, I don't like zucchini. Um, I don't. I've never eaten it raw, <laughs> so maybe it's fine raw. But like cooked zucchini is not my favorite sort of thing. But right now, like anything that is not sweet, sounds amazing right now. Like my teeth feel like they're complaining. Like they're like, no more sugar, please stop giving me sugar. The zucchini has very little flavor, so it's just kind of taking on the flavor of that tomato sauce that I made, and tomato sauce is really good. So uh, I think I actually like this a little bit better than the, uh, the butternut squash, because that one was kind of sweet. For me right now, where I want something savory, this is like exactly what I need. Um, well, I mean, like exactly what I need right now would be like three slices of pizza. Nothing else really to add, so I will see you at dinner, I guess, or whatever the next meal is. It's one other thing is that, like, not really having set meals here. I'm trying to, to make, you know, this video make, make some sort of, like, chronological sense, but really it's like, I feel like I'm eating, like, a lot of little snacks and stuff like that, which I'm not really, like, showing too much, because it's like, eh, like, I'm eating, like, a rambutan or, like, a couple of cashews or something. It's not really anything worth talking about. So I guess that's kind of like something that fruitarians do, I I've heard, is that they kind of like graze on food throughout the day, and uh, I think that makes sense. But even then, like some, when I've had like big meals, like one of those big fruit bowls or something, like I'm good for like hours. Like I don't need to eat anything. Another haul. This time I have uh, four avocados. I got four because they were on sale, two for a dollar. Can't go wrong there. And uh, some baby bananas, a star fruit, some tomatoes, and uh, some lemons, and then a whole hell of a lot of peppers. I want things that are not sweet, and I'm getting kind of tired of tomatoes and cucumbers. So peppers are another way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make some guacamole. That actually looks very good. I'm surprised that this was only 50 cents. Avocados can be like up to $3 here in New York. So that's a steal. One jalapeno. And the juice of one lime. Sun-dried tomatoes. That's a way to get a little bit more flavor, a little bit more salt. It's gonna make it more tomatoey, which I guess it's alright. Going to dip some fruit into more fruit. That's how I roll. Check out my beautiful guacamole. And I've got a big plate full of peppers and sugar snap peas to go with it. Yes, yes, oh god, yes. So, let's give it a shot. This feels like so weird eating guacamole without uh, a tortilla chip and instead using a pepper, but you know what? Still looks pretty good. I'll take it. I've been out all day, haven't really eaten a whole lot. So to have like this fat right now and something savory, not just like another banana, uh, is pretty nice. My day was uh, not bad, not bad at all. I went out with some friends to a museum and then went out to a coffee shop 
the coffee shop had a juice bar as well, so I managed to find a sea buckthorn juice. So that was like a different flavor at least, so I was pretty good with that. Also fairly filling, so after having that I didn't really want to eat anything um, for a while after that, which was good because we went to a Japanese restaurant shortly afterwards and I could not have a single thing on the menu. I just sat there drinking a water and looking at my two friends as they ate delicious ramen noodles and tofu and... Ooh, I feel like I'm making like a little mental list in my head for like when this week is over, like all the places that I'm going to go and eat at. And I think that's gonna go on there, because that food looked amazing. I, I'm feeling more satiated by eating fruit than the stuff I normally would be eating. Because usually if I eat like, uh, you know, whatever, a piece of pizza or something, I'll be good for like a few hours, but then like three, four hours go by and I'm gonna need more food. But today, like, I went a long period of time without eating. Maybe it is that I'm just tired of eating healthy things. Maybe if I had, like, junk food available, like, if I could eat junk food, that I'd be eating a lot more snacks. I don't really have much news to report. It's, it's, I feel kind of the same as I have the past few days. Uh, I feel like I've worked out everything in my system, and now I'm just kind of like, yep, kind of bored, but doing fine. Morning, papaya, strawberries, blackberries, coconut, an orange, and a jalapeno. It's alright. Peppers are like giving me that little bit of endorphin rush <laughs> that I really want. You know, usually I'd be getting that from, you know, coffee and sugar and fat and like all that and some bread and I, don't, I can't have that. So instead I'm getting it from uh, Scoville's. It's kind of a lazy day, so I might go out and do something. I might stay in and just get some work done. I don't know. But we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. So, stick around. Oh, yeah. Oh, my hair. So, I've got a star fruit or carambola, I think they're called which I've never reviewed on this channel before, and the reason for that is uh, I feel like these are fairly common. Even like, you know, Walmart will have them and stuff like that. Called star fruit because if you look at it, it looks, oh, I don't know if it will focus on that. There we go. It looks like a little star, especially when you cut it. So it's fun is to cut these into like little, little slices like that and put it like on a fruit platter. It's, uh, it's cute. It's a cute decoration and it's uh, pretty tasty too. It's very juicy. It's a little bit astringent, but not too much. So it kind of like tickles your tongue just a little bit. On a scale of one to 10, where 10 is a sugar cube, this is, hmm, Maybe like a four on the level of sourness. This is probably a three. It's kind of, sort of, a little bit like a green grape, but not. <laughs> like if you start with a green grape and then you kind of like monkey with it a little bit, make it a little more tart, make it a little, uh, take away some of the grape flavor. There's maybe like a hint of a grape flavor in here, but it more reminds me a little bit of eating like a very crispy grape. One thing with it that's kind of interesting is that these are um, not good for people 
who have kidney problems. Like if you eat like a whole bunch of these, they can be bad for your kidneys. Yeah, so I highly recommend these. Um, if you do see these at the market and you haven't had one before, uh, pick it up. Okay, time for another salad. And whoa, I've got with me today my Sikkim Cucumber, which uh, I filmed a little review of it, and I think I'm going to place that uh, in a fruit video later on, but basically it just tastes like a regular cucumber, maybe a little blander. And I'm going to take that and some of those peppers and stuff and like mix it up with uh, my dressing. I still have some left. Surprisingly, it's lasted me like this entire week, so that's great. Scratch that, I am going to make it interesting. I'm going to put some of this uh, cantaloupe in there because that's something that chefs do. I've, I've definitely been to like a fancy restaurant where they gave me like cantaloupe with like cheese on it or something. So I think this will be good. So uh, I'm going to put some of that in there and uh, see if I don't ruin it. What do you say, cat? How are you feeling about this week? This week as a fruitarian. Yeah. She doesn't care. I have here a gigantic bowl of cucumbers, peppers, tomatoes, avocado, cantaloupe. Again, same complaints. You know, like, I want salt. I know this isn't going to have salt in it. I haven't even had a bite yet, but, you know. I know it's gonna happen. Uh, I'm hoping that the, the heat and the sourness and everything and the sweetness will kind of like make me forget that I really would just love to like lick a salt lick right now. All right, let's try it. Oddly, that does seem to go with the heat and everything like that. As I've been doing this week, I've been noticing that fruits that would normally be considered a vegetable, like a culinary vegetable, I'm mixing those with sweet fruits. So adding like jalapeno to something and uh, like this example of putting like the melon in the salad, like that sweetness and the savory taste is, is fine. They also seem to just make more sense together now. Like I, I feel like I can take any of the things that I have here and mix, I can take them all and mix them together. You know, make a salad, put a smoothie on top and throw some sun-dried tomatoes on it and cashew, and I think like I could probably do that and it would still taste good. My taste buds are just kind of like, eh, whatever, we'll take it. Today was fine. I had good, I don't really remember what happened. Um, it's all kind of like blurring together at this point. If I eat three slices of pizza, I'm gonna be full for like a while. I'm gonna be full for like majority of the day and then maybe I'll have something later. Uh, if I eat something that has like an egg in it, then uh, I'm good for like a long time. Like I, I feel like I, my body ha takes more time to digest that sort of thing. With fruit though, it just kind of like, it goes through you pretty quickly and it digests very quickly, I think. So like when you eat it, like you feel full, but not like full in a way like, you're stuffed. It's like, all, like after like a moment, I feel like I can eat again, you know, or I feel like the urge to eat again. Like maybe I'm still feeling full, but I, I want to like pick at things. And if I eat something that's like like uh, more fattening, then uh, I won't, I'm not gonna have that urge. If this is like how humans used to eat when they were like cavemen and stuff, then fruit would be would make more sense because then you can be like running away from you know bears it's not going to like uh slow you down maybe but it's also not really getting rid of that urge to eat for me the way other foods will honestly i'm, I'm still kind of conflicted about it you know i feel there are benefits to fruitarianism, and I can see the negatives to fruitarianism. It's not, it's not so cut and dry. I, I, I'm not like, I hate this. It's like, I, I can understand it. So tomorrow should be interesting. Tomorrow should be interesting when I sit down and actually try to like get all my thoughts together on this. So uh, I will see you then. Day seven. Yes, it is finally come. This is the last day, and I am thrilled to uh to be done with this week but you know it wasn't that bad it was uh totally fine i feel 
Like, at some points, I thought this day would never come. Like, on day, like, two, I was like, oh, no. But uh, as I went along, you know, the days went by pretty quickly. It didn't really bother me, like, too terribly much. So this morning, I am going to kind of, like, try to eat through some of this fruit that I have. So this pineapple. Yep, I've got this on day one and haven't even opened it yet. Yes, yes, yes. Very fresh tasting. Nice, um, light, bright kind of kind of flavor. Not super sweet, but like sweet enough for me. So happy with that. I can see myself making these smoothies even like when I'm off like this diet. Uh, just they're they're good. I don't know if I'd want them like in the morning. It's in the morning I want like hot things. Um, I think I'd rather a cup of coffee, you know? Well, I definitely would rather a cup of coffee. It's also like a good way to get rid of fruit that's going bad. If I just like, oh no, bananas are going bad, I just would like throw them in the freezer and then you throw them in a smoothie, you know? It makes a lot of practical sense. Uh, also, I'm gonna be eating durian. Oh yeah. Just saved like two little pieces. There's not much left, but it's been like a whole week on this diet, and I feel like I deserve a treat. I feel like I finally get it. This is what I want like all the time. Uh, never was like that before. I liked durian before, and now I really like it. It is time for lunch, and I'm going to make another salad. I'm doing that not because I really want it, but because uh, it's the easiest thing to do right now with what I have available to me. If I had the choice of eating like anything, I would go and I'd get some more of those like zucchini noodles and put some sauce on it. But I ate all of that. Uh, these uh, sugar snap peas sound really good right now because they're more like a vegetable and I, I really don't want anything too terribly sweet right now. So I'm gonna put that in there, some peppers and uh, some tomatoes. I might put a little extra lemon in this. Um, so my taste buds are kind of bored. So this very well might be the last meal that I have today. Is it getting boring watching me eat essentially the same thing every day, but kind of like switched around a little bit? Because, um, you know, eating it is fairly boring, but not as boring as uh, I would imagine. I I'm not getting sick of it like I would if I were to eat like two pieces of cake or something. I'm craving other things for sure, like I would love to eat something else, but uh, having another bowl of the salad is not killing me right now. So first let's talk about some of the positives about fruitarianism. Number one, you feel full. And this was, I know I've said it a few times already this week, but this was shocking to me. The first two days were the most difficult days because I felt like my body was like adjusting. And then once I kind of like got into it, my body was like, okay, so we're just eating fruit now. You got it. I, I felt like, I felt a change in me. I would eat fruit and I could go out for like five, six hours and not really like eat anything and be totally fine. Second, it makes you feel lighter. Like, although you feel full, it doesn't really weigh you down as much. Earlier today, I did some stretching, and usually with my, my normal diet, I would eat lunch and then wait maybe like two hours. But with this, uh, I ate lunch and then I stretched after like 20 minutes. Three, uh, this one I'm not too sure. I'm a little skeptical about it, but I, I'm kind of noticing it is that I feel like my skin is nicer. It doesn't feel as oily as it normally would be. I wish that like I did a like extreme close-up of my pores or something, because I'm sure you would love that, and uh, saw like what it looked like and you know then and now, but I don't know. Does it look does it look better to you? And the fourth and final thing that is good about being fruitarian, uh, it's pretty easy. Because I'm everything's raw, I don't have to cook anything. <laughs> You just take like whatever fruit you want, you cut it up, you put it in a bowl. If you are going out or something, just carry some bananas with you. 
There were a few more difficult things I did, like making the sauce and the dressing and stuff like that, and even that was not, like, terrible. I don't have to worry about, like, cleaning any pots and pans. My cutting board has been, like, washed, like, 30 times. But uh, other than that, you know, I'm not really creating as much uh, in that sense. Okay, negatives. Number one, it's expensive. I totally get why people practice fruitarianism in Bali. If you go to Bali, there's fruitarians like everywhere. That's because you can get the kind of nutrients that you need cheaply. You can get coconuts, you can get durian, you can get all of that for just like, you know, pennies. But here in New York City, that is not the case. I don't have the tally right now, but I will put it here. For a week of food, that's what it cost me. I think if you're doing this in Borneo, this would be a dollar or two. You know, wouldn't be that much. But for this week, it cost me a lot of money. Two, the social aspect. This has uh, definitely affected my social life. I've had friends call me and ask if I wanted to hang out because they were having like, uh, all my friends do an Albo or do the coffee videos. They were like, oh, we just like made this uh, special fruit butter. They took fresh raspberries and they mixed it into butter and they were gonna make like pancakes. And they're like, we want to share it with you, so uh, are you free today? And I was like, well, I'm free, but I can't eat that. Instead, I stayed in. And uh, the few times that I did go out with friends, uh, it was a lot of situations where like I would be sitting and they would be eating, which is, you know, fine, but you know, you're kind of missing out then. You know, you're not, you're not able to kind of share that restaurant experience with each other. They're telling you about their food and you're like, oh, that's great. Well, this water is good. I think the very militant kind of fruitarian that I was, and even like what I did was not as extreme as you can get, it's almost impossible to eat out. Next, and this is maybe just a personal preference, but the food's cold. It's always cold. It's either room temperature or cold or frozen. So much of food that I like is the, the warmth of it. There's something comforting to it. Just the fact that I can't have like a, a cup of tea was killing me. Like, it's not even a matter of feeling full or anything. It's just the sensation of having that nice warm cup of tea. That kind of drove me crazy. Number four, it's repetitive. I was eating like the same few things over and over and over again. I tried to mix it up as much as I could. I went into like different fruit markets to get different things. And this is coming from Weird Fruit Explorer here. I've had so many different types of fruits. Believe me, I've got my sources. I went, I found stuff, I found a durian, like I, I, I did all that. But even with that kind of variety, it was very difficult. Five, and this is my biggest problem with fruitarianism. And I guess I could say with also like raw food or you might have a problem with being a vegetarian for this reason. When you have a restricted diet, it restricts you. You can't eat as much as other people can. And when you're someone like me, who loves traveling, loves exploring, loves trying the things from other cultures, you don't get that. You don't get the full experience. Some of my favorite memories of traveling have to do with food, and the idea of like losing those memories because of a restriction is is kind of sad to me. I, I feel like uh, just as simple as like sitting on the side of the road in India and watching the rickshaws go by and drinking a cup of tea while everybody else is drinking a cup of tea around me. Uh, that was like one of my favorite memories of being in India and not to be able to do that, I feel, is uh, kind of sad to me. I, I, I would hate to like lose that experience. I'm sure I can get other experiences that come from you know, eating fruit. I guess I could sit on the corner with the, those people and eat a banana, but I kind of like wanted to share the experience of like what they're doing, and they were drinking tea. Almost all the countries that I visited have been very difficult uh, as far as being a vegetarian. If I had to limit myself even more when I was traveling, this would be very, very hard for me. I, I would feel like I was losing so much of the experience. I think what makes the most sense to me would be to take a certain kind of diet that you 
really want, like if you really want to be like a fruitarian, but not to be super militant about it, to kind of like do what you feel is right for you. Like if you are out with friends to be like, well, you know what, I'm going to be vegan now. I'm going to have some hot veggie burger because I'm out right now and I'm with friends. I want to have a good time. I think you don't just have to listen to your body, but you also have to listen to your life. You have to say to yourself, like, okay, am I living the best life I have if I limit myself in this way? So I'm actually glad that I did this. I think that uh, going forward, I'm going to take a few of these things that I've learned and uh, apply them to my, my life. I'm going to maybe eat more of a fruit paste or a raw uh, meal before I do exercises. I'm gonna eat a lot more dates. I might make that some of those dishes again, like maybe the zucchini noodles. I, I probably will heat up the sauce, but like that was pretty good. I am not going to continue being fruitarian, but I feel like I do understand it a little bit more now. And I hope you've enjoyed watching me uh, document this experience as I have, and uh, I will see you next time. It's uh, just about midnight, and yeah, I'm going out <laughs> to get some food. I think I'm going to try to find some pizza or something. My craving subsided, you know, as this week was going on. It got better. But the end of it, like, I would love some hot food. I would love something that's got bread in it. Uh, yeah, now that I'm, like, so close to the end now, those cravings are coming back. And, uh, yeah, I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna find some food. I'm gonna wait until, you know, midnight just so we're doing it legit. And then I'm going to eat that. So I want to just take a moment to give a formal apology to everybody out there for the state of my hair. Oh my god, I am... I don't know. So I wasn't intending to do a aftermath kind of video or anything, but I, I am noticing like a few things adjusting back. I ate pizza last night and went to bed. I was up, like, late. I was up until, like, maybe, like, four in the morning or something, and I think that's because of the, uh, the caffeine in the, uh, Diet Coke. Maybe because I just, like, ate, like, a whole ton of carbs also, and my body was just like, okay, well, here's some energy. I do not want to eat for, like, the rest of my life right now because of all that pizza that I ate, um, and I think that is partially because of the the adjustment. I just made a cup of coffee, which amazingly, like my craving for this coffee is not nearly as much as it um, normally would be. Usually like I wake up in the morning, I'm like, the first thing that I say is like, coffee, and I like go over and I make a cup of coffee. And um, 
Yeah, so I, I didn't really feel the urge to drink this, but I felt like, I'm like, I, this is what I usually do. I want to see what it's like to get back into it. But the, the urge to drink this coffee is not huge. So I think I, like, if you have a coffee addiction or something, like I did, then uh, taking a week off, just like forcing yourself not to drink any caffeine, and um, it'll help. Yeah, that's that's fun. Uh, I'm addicted to caffeine. I, that's something that I'm, I'm learning here. Um, I think I'm okay with that. If I've learned uh, a few things from this past week, uh, I was drinking a lot of coffee. I was drinking like, not like as much as some people, but like, you know, like two cups a day, three cups a day maybe. And uh, that's not good. There's, there's other ways to get energy, I think, that are a lot, a lot better. So for me, I think like one cup of coffee is where I'm going to kind of like leave it, and uh, you know I don't want I don't want to get that addiction to be as strong as it was. Tea, though, I think uh, I don't know. I like tea, and tea's supposed to be good for you, right? Uh, maybe I'll cut down on tea too. I, I don't know. I think that um, I don't know. I don't want to I don't want to be like crazy addicted to things. That doesn't seem like a good thing to do. Um, but I also don't want to cut things out of my life entirely that I enjoy. Also, it doesn't taste that strong. I feel maybe it's just like how I made it, or maybe my taste buds are all like, like shot out from eating papaya. But I feel like I should have made this like twice as strong as I did. Still good though. Oh, and I forgot yesterday in my conclusion to add another pro to being fruitarian, and, um, yeah, it, how do I say this in a way that will give it the dignity and class that, um, that it deserves? It is, mm, good for your digestion, for anyone who might have, like, trouble like in that department, it's pretty extreme to like go and like get like you know, devices in order to solve that. I think that it might be your diet. I don't know. It might be some clinical thing also. I don't know. I'm not too. I'm too sure. Not uh, not a medical expert here by any means. But I would recommend trying it because like I noticed a difference. Like. Oh my god. I think fruit has fruit has a lot of water in it. It has a lot of fiber in it. So, I mean, do the math. Like, that is going to make some magic happen. I do see a lot of pluses with fruitarianism. I, I worry that, like, yesterday I was being a little too harsh uh, or be interpreted that way. But uh, there are pros to it, for sure. It just doesn't really work with the lifestyle that I have and, like, the things that... Um, I am passionate about. So yeah, I don't want to like crap all over fruitarianism, especially after being on like a fruitarian diet for a week. I would like to give a big shout out to Lofty Rex and Smarter Every Day. They are mega patrons over on Patreon.com. Patreon.com is basically how I can afford to go on all the adventures I do on this channel. So if you enjoy my series and you want to help support me, check out the link in the description below. If you don't want to go on Patreon, I also have t-shirts for sale like this one here, the Durian Anatomy shirt. That is available on my website, which I also put in the description below. Thanks so much, everybody. See you next time.